today I'm going to be talking about some surfaces. And I've got a piece uh, kind of like the types of pieces that we saw yesterday, a June bug. That's the one uh, right here. And you know, for those of you who appreciate woodwork, this is a, an oak burl you know, that I you know, uh, sliced and you know, uh, polished. And you know, I'm talking about really two different types of origami uh, today. You know, yesterday we saw a type of you know model working, you know, very very uh, high level origami uh, featured by Brian. And uh, you know, I have a few pieces like that, but currently my interest is in different type of origami altogether. I am interested in these tessellated molecule surfaces. So I'll be talking about um, how to model them and you know what I see their uses as or where I see you know the whole thing going. So you know, here I've got uh, two different uh, tessellated molecule surfaces. This is called the Miyori map fold, and it has pretty nice history. And this is called the tessellated uh, water bomb surface, also, also known as a water bomb corrugation, which is now being uh, developed into something you know, quite nice as well. So I'll begin with the Miyori map fold. And this has the property that if I elongate the distance between any two points along this fold, the whole thing expands. So I mean, you can definitely guess that there's a lot of applications for this. One of which was when this model was uh, actually flown to space uh, in the form of a solar cell array in 1994. That was with the Japanese space mission. So this is my personal uh, favorite, the tessellated water bomb surface. And I've actually connected it with clips here. I'm going to take that off. So we can really see you know, all the shapes that this can morph into. So why am I interested in this? You know, uh, for those of you who are already seeing something here, I think that there is a type of you know, natural intrigue to you know, the complexity that's going on here. And you know, I had you know, kind of come into this. Uh, I was actually trying to make fur for an animal you know, in these uh, model-making mode here. Um, but you know, then I started seeing that, look, this is a mathematical type of surface. And of course, you know, I started thinking about it. And you know, from there, I said, well, why is it a mathematical surface? You know, that's a question which can only be um, solved by defining this thing mathematically. So you know, I was at the University of Santa Cruz, and I wanted to get into research. So I started looking at it. And you know, what types of questions were I asked, was I asking? You know, First of all, I noticed something you know, kind of interesting about this model, is that when you, you know, open it and close it, it expands and contracts. You know, and you know, that can't just be happening out of nowhere because it always does the same thing. You know, there must be some sort of you know, pattern going on here. So you know, what did I do? I found the uh, independent variables which you know, define this model. And I think that's the part of my uh, creative experience here which is going to translate to um, any experiences you might have, which is you know, finding exactly you know, which uh, elements of a problem uh, really define it. You know, so what was the defining element here? Well, that turned out to be um, a zigzag line. So you know, currently, um, you know, I've been developing this idea for you know, quite some time. It's taken quite a bit of time. But you know, what I have now is a mathematical model. Uh, this was done uh, at the University of Georgia. There was an NSF funded RAU uh, last summer. And I now have a model where you know, I plotted all these in space. And you know, why is that model important? Well, it gives a chance to really uh, define mathematically you know, what is it you know, that's so intriguing about this saddle shape. You know, is it that there is something called a Gaussian curvature, which you know, is negative everywhere? That's how we define a saddle shape in mathematics. So you know, there's been a lot of questions here. But you know, like I said, I think that uh, you know, what really can apply here is the creative process. You know, I've been working on this for actually years now. It started out as kind of a hobby, but it has grown. And I now have um, a publication uh, you know, on this subject. So I think you know, that is one thing that I can offer here. And then the rest is just you know, how it looks. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>